Hello, good morning, welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's eight o'clock on Wednesday, the 25th of September. I'm reading Common Worship Daily Prayer from the Church of England. You'll find the words at the Church of England's website at Aremus Daily Prayer, downloadable as an app for Apple or Android device. In the book, Common Worship Daily Prayer, you'll find the words towards the beginning in the Prayer During the Day section. No, after the Prayer During the Day section, in the uh, Ordinary Time section, after Prayer During the Day, Morning Prayer on Tuesday. You're welcome to join me in the building, 8 and 6, Tuesday to Saturday. Um, The codes for Zoom, um, if you want to join uh, electronically, are on the uh, Live Church's website and Facebook page. We're live streaming on Facebook, and the audio will appear on my Dominic Doble YouTube channel presently. Um, We're also remembering Lancelot, Andrews, as a lesser festival. Um, If you are following the book, you might like to look him up... um, Amongst the saints' days and festivals, um, halfway through, I shall read something from Kindle Edition celebrating the saints by way of a biography um, in due course. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. A song of God's glorious name, O Lord, our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised. Out of the mouths of babes at the breast. You have founded a stronghold against your foes, that you might still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained. What are mortals that you should be mindful of them? Mere human beings that you should seek them out. You have made them little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands and put all things under their feet. All sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The psalm this morning is 77, number 77. You'll find it at the back of the book in the Psalter after the Canticles. Uh, Do go on until it has the word psalm in front of the number 77, otherwise you might be at Canticle 77, uh, and that wouldn't work. Psalm 77. In the day of my trouble I have sought the Lord. I cry aloud to God. I cry aloud to God, and he will hear me. In the day of my trouble I have sought the Lord. By night my hand is stretched out and does not tire. My soul refuses comfort. I think upon God and I groan. I ponder and my spirit faints. You will not let my eyelids close. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I consider the days of old. I remember the years long past. I commune with my heart in the night. My spirit searches for understanding. Will the Lord cast us off for ever? Will he no more show us his favour? Has his loving mercy clean gone for ever? Has his promise come to an end for evermore? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he shut up his compassion in displeasure? And I said, my grief is this, that the right hand of the Lord Most High has lost its strength. I remember the works of the Lord and call to mind your wonders of old time. 
uh, meditate on all your works and ponder your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. Who is so great a God as our God? You are the God who worked wonders and declared your power among the peoples. With a mighty arm you redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw you, O God. The waters saw you and were afraid. The depths also were troubled. The clouds poured out water. The skies thundered. Your arrows flashed on every side. The voice of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightnings lit up the ground. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was in the sea and your paths in the great waters, but your footsteps were not known. You led your people like sheep by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. In the day of my trouble, I have sought the Lord. So we scroll past our first reading to the canticle, turning back to morning prayer on Wednesday. If you're following the book, canticle, the song of the word of the Lord. Return to the Lord, he will have mercy. To our God, he will richly pardon. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked abandon their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Return to the Lord, he will have mercy. To our God, he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, So are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from above, and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread to eat, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth, it will not return to me fruitless, but it will accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the task I gave it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Return to the Lord, who will have mercy. To our God, he will richly pardon. Born in 1555 in Barking, Lancelot Andrew studied at Merchant Taylor's School and Pembroke Hall, now Pembroke College, Cambridge. After ordination, he held several posts before accepting appointments as Bishop, first of Chichester, then of Ely, and finally of Winchester in 1619. Andrews was president at the Hampton Court Conference in 1604, which furthered the reform of the Church of England, and was also a translator of much of the Old Testament, or Hebrew Scriptures, what is known as the Authorised Version of the Bible. His preaching and his writings proved highly influential, and his holiness of life and gentle nature endeared him to all who met him. He died on this day in the year 1626, and his remains lie in a church which was then in his Diocese of Winchester, but is now the Cathedral for the Diocese of Southwark. So, back to our Bible reading, 1 Kings 22, 1 Kings chapter 22, reading from verse 29. So you'll find 1 Kings in the first quarter of the Bible, if you've got both covenants in front of you, it's in the Hebrew Scriptures, history section. Um, we've got 1st, 2nd Samuel, then is it 1st, 2nd Kings, 1st, 2nd Chronicles, it might be that way around, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, about a quarter of the way in, 1st Kings, so it's number one in the title of the book. Um, and then once you found First Kings, we're looking for, looking for um, verse number 22. So that's the small number in the text, verse numbers uh, 22. And we're going from, oh no, 1 Kings in the title, large number 22 in the margin, chapter 22. And we're reading from small numbers in the text, 29. Book 1 Kings, chapter 22, starting at verse 29. I'll scroll back to it from the canticle if you're following online. So the king of Israel and King Jehoshaphat of Judah went up to Ramoth Gilead. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and go into battle, but you wear your robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself and went into battle. Now the king of Aram had commanded the thirty-two captains of his chariots to fight with no one great or small, but only the king of Israel. When the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat, they said, It is surely the king of Israel. So they turned to fight against him, and Jehoshaphat cried out. When the captains of the chariots saw that it was not the king of Israel, they turned back from pursuing him. But a certain man drew his bone unknowingly, struck the king of Israel between the scale arm and the breastplate. So he said to the driver of his chariot, turn around and carry me out of the battle, for I am wounded. The battle grew hot that day, and the king was propped up in his chariot, facing the Arameans until the evening, until at evening he died. The blood from the wound had flowed into the bottom of the chariot. 
Then, about sunset, a shout went through the army, every man to his city and every man to his country. So the king died and was brought to Samaria. They buried the king in Samaria. They washed the chariot of the pool of Samaria. The dogs licked up his blood, and the prostitutes washed themselves in it, according to the word of the Lord that he had spoken. Now the rest of the acts of Ahab and all that he did, and the ivory house that he built, and all the cities that he built, are they not written in the book of the annals of kings of Israel? So Ahab slept with his ancestors, and his sons Ahaziah succeeded him. Jehoshaphat, son of <coughs> Asa, began to reign over Judah in the fourth year of King Ahab of Israel. Jehoshaphat was 35 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for 25 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Abuja Az- Azuba, daughter of Shilhi. He walked in all the way of his father Asa. He did not turn aside from it, doing what was right in the sight of the Lord. Yet the high places were not taken away, <coughs> and the people still sacrificed and offered incense on the high places. Jehoshaphat also made peace with the king of Israel. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat and his power that he showed and how he waged war, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? <coughs> so the story of the end of the life of King Jehoshaphat. <coughs> the king of Israel um, asked Jehoshaphat if he would go to fight with him against the Aramaeans to get back Ramoth Gilead, which was a city that had been traditionally under their control, but had fallen to this neighbouring peoples. Um, but for some reason they want to go um, in disguise, I guess because the king of uh, Israel knows that the Aramaeans know who he is. Um, so maybe that was his plan all along. But nevertheless, despite him being in disguise, despite the um, enemy recognising him, um, an incidental arrow takes his life. And uh, we're told that his blood falls into chariot. We wonder why then in the next paragraph we're told that um, dogs are the kit and prostitutes washing it. <clears throat> I don't know if that was supposed to make them more um, attractive, whether it was supposed to be for healing or I don't know what it was. It sounds like it's some sort of cultural, um, spiritual, potentially, um, activity, ceremony. <clears throat> it might have been a, a sort of... Uh, like grief, the grieving widows or some such. But uh, we're told that uh, Jehoshaphat dies. Um, everybody's told to go home, and then we're just given a potted biography. Jehoshaphat was born such and such. Uh, he lived well, he lived right, he was succeeded by his son. Well, he... he lived in the way of his father, so he followed the Lord, but he didn't clear away the high places. And uh, then the concluding lines, which often end the biographies, um, everything's written about him, is written in the Book of Kings, and here it is. So I'm not really sure what uh, we might make of that um, in terms of any application. Um, it could be a fatalistic, these things happen, there's not much in the way of God in there, perhaps, for us. He had lived right. He died as he lived. The odd thing about being disguised, kings shouldn't do that. Maybe that was a foreboding, a warning that he was going to die in that battle. We should be ourselves. Um, and I would suggest the church should enable people to be themselves and not pretend to be people they're not, because that's only caused them and the people they live amongst harm. Moving on then to our next reading, Acts 23 from 12. So Act comes after the four Gospels. The four Gospels open the last third of the Scriptures. Uh, the Christian material, the Greek, Testament, or Covenant. So if you open the book two-thirds of the way through, and after Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you will find Acts. Within Acts, chapter 23, large number in the margin, chapter 23. And uh, within chapter 23, the small number in the text, we're reading from verse 12 to the end. In the morning, the Jews joined in a conspiracy and bound themselves by an oath neither to eat nor drink until they had killed Paul. There were more than 30 who joined in this conspiracy. They went to the chief priests and elders and said, We have strictly bound ourselves by an oath to taste no food until we have killed Paul. Now then you and the council must notify the tribune to bring him down to you on the pretext that you wanted to make a more thorough examination of his case. And we are ready to do away with him before he arrives. Now the son of Paul's sister heard about the ambush, so he went and gained an entrance to the barracks and told Paul. Paul called one of the centurions to take this young man to the tribune for he has something to report to him. So he took him to the tribune and said, the prisoner Paul called me and asked me to bring this young man to you. He has something to tell you. The tribune took him by the hand, drew him aside private and said, what is it that you have to report to me? He answered, Jews have agreed to ask you to bring Paul down to the council tomorrow as they are going to inquire more 
as though they are going to inquire more thoroughly into his case, but do not be persuaded by them, for more than 30, 40 of their men are lying in ambush for him. They have bound themselves by an oath and to eat nor drink until they have killed him. They are ready now and are waiting for your consent. So the tribune dismissed the young man, ordering him, Tell no one that you have informed me of this. Then he summoned two of the centurions and said, Get ready to leave by nine o'clock tonight for Caesarea with 200 soldiers, 70 horsemen, 200 spearmen. Also tried mounts for Paul to ride and take him safely to Felix the governor. He wrote a letter to this effect. Claudius Lysias, Lysias to His Excellency the Governor Felix, greetings. This man was seized by the Jews and was about to be killed by them. When I had learned that he was a Roman citizen, I came with the guards and rescued him. Since I wanted to know the charge for which they accused him, I had him brought to their council. I found that he was accused concerning questions of their law, but was charged with nothing deserving death or imprisonment. When I was informed that there would be a plot against the man I sent to you at once, ordering his accusers also to state before you what they have against him. So the soldiers, according to their instructions, took Paul and brought him during the night, and to Patris, the next day they let the horsemen go on with him, while they returned to the barracks. And when they came to Caesarea and delivered the letter to the governor, they prevent, presented Paul also before him. On reading the letter, he asked what province he belonged to. When he learned he was from Cilicia, he said, I will give you a hearing when your inquirers arrive. Then he ordered that he be kept under guard in Herod's headquarters. Just extraordinary thing that struck me reading that this time was just how much military might and power had been given to escort Paul safely to Felix um, on the one hand and just how vulnerable that little thread of that lad, I don't know what age he was, going to um, ask the Tribune if he could let him know of this plot he's heard. What if he hadn't heard it? What if he hadn't told his mum? What if his mum, was it his mum, hadn't sent him to Paul? What if he'd not been allowed into Paul? What if he'd not then been able to get through to the um, to the Tribune. Um, so that extraordinary mix of frailty and power <clears throat> involved in our faith. There are times when we're on the edge, don't know whether we're going to be able to cope. There are times when we're, I don't know, cleaning babies sick from our clothes or from the floor or bad news about accommodation or work or whatever it might be and then the next minute we're up at the front taking a, a lecture or reading a seminar or having a book published or whatever it is um, just the human condition there in a nutshell so be encouraged um, sometimes these things fall well sometimes the state works with us just remember yesterday or the day before Paul was about to be flogged um, interrogated by flogging until he said he was Roman, may the privilege of being Christian um, bear weight, redeem and rescue us in the face of our adversaries. To the response, you then back in morning prayer on Wednesday. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you, you hold me by my right hand, and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. The Song of Zechariah. <clears throat> Common of Bishops, uh, if you are following the book, do join in Blessed Be or pause a while, look up 25th of September and uh, find uh, Lancelot Andrews and you'll find direction there to the opening and closing refrain to the Song of Zechariah. I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, to remember his holy covenant. This is the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation, by the forgiveness of all their sins, in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I will give you shepherds after my own heart, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding.
Source, Sun, Essence, one in three, three in one. At the beginning of this day, we thank you that uh, <coughs> our readings, though not necessarily our own everyday experience, um, let us know the fragility of life and uh, how sometimes you might seem distant, sometimes we might not notice, but only realise in retrospect just how fragile that rescue, that redemption, that salvation, <coughs> that uh, escape was. <clears throat> we pray that you'll see us through the day and to grant us good rapport with the authorities. May they support and sustain your word, your mission, your ministry in us. World Council Churches, prayers for Bolivia, Brazil, Chile and Peru continue. We are thankful for the beauty of the region, forests, mountains, rivers, lakes and ocean coastlines, the especially indigenous peoples and especially the indigenous peoples relationship with and care for the natural environment and uh, we pray for an end to the corruption in all levels of society including economic exploitation which impoverishes and hinders economic growth from better benefiting all <clears throat> christian action research education lord we pray for those employed within the british pregnancy advisory service msi Reproductive Choices and National Unplanned Pregnancy Advisory Service that undertake 200,000 abortions each year. Um, it writes here, may they come to know your mercy and forgiveness in the context of their work. I don't know whether that's this evangelical organisation trying to be liberal in its approach, um, but uh, as a liberal Catholic who believes in the woman's, woman's right to make decisions about her body, um, I would add my amen that mercy and forgiveness should be um, have a large stake in all conversations, discussions about um, fertility and uh, women as well as children, fathers or other contributors to the pregnancy. Um, in these days, of course, it need not be a male especially where there's been violence, where the challenge for having a child is causing so much stress and anxiety in the face of other commitments and responsibilities. We pray that your mercy and forgiveness will be to the fore, for all involved. Green Christian. Today is a high-level meeting on sea level rise. That's... Uh, excellent um, connection as part of the 79th UN General Assembly. Global leaders, experts, stakeholders will gather to address the escalating threat of rising sea levels. Another excellent um, connected simile. Building common understanding, mobilising leadership, promoting multi-sector and multi-stakeholder collaboration and international cooperation. And the writers repeat addressing the threats posed by sea level rise. And uh, I just hope and pray that they are able to talk to each other, that they are able to agree. Um, I really have to pray to God to give me the faith in these circumstances, but pray for progress, commitment. Five marks of mission from the Anglican Communion. The fifth of which is our engagement with creation. Pope Francis' prayer, which I have serialised throughout the week, includes the lines, O God of the poor, help us to rescue the abandoned and forgotten of this earth, so precious in your eyes. Bring healing to our lives, that we may protect the world and not prey on it, that we may say beauty, not pollution and destruction. <clears throat> in our benefice cycle of prayer, <clears throat> we pray on Wednesdays for those who teach um, both independent living, hobbies, crafts, sport, art, and also reading, writing, arithmetic, to those of all ages. We pray that they will be uh, sustained, and, uh, satisfied, um, valued in their work. And they will have the resources in terms of time, staff, colleagues, training to be fulfilled in that calling. Pray for our people who look after our churches, for um, John and Chris and Holt, particularly John, um, with the hip 
gut infection, possibly another stuff going on, taking over their lives on a trip to America. We um, pray that all will be covered by insurance, that he will quickly recover to a point where he might be able to be transported home. And uh, we pray that his care will continue here. Um, we pray for Jill and family as they worry and uh, face what probably is like to be increasing, inevitably, um, a curtailment of any hopes they might have had for an extended future as a couple. May God be merciful. Sir Peter Weniston, uh, pray for John the Warden there, Junior at Bramfield, Charlie at Blyford, uh, Mike at Thorrington. We pray that you bring in people, all of those parishes need um, a second church warden. Um, three or four would be do well to have another treasurer. We could do with a secretary in uh, at least one that probably would be helpful. But four more people on each PCC, perhaps with that role, perhaps he could shadow, but with innovation that are inspiring, that are fun, full of ambition and joy for what the medieval building in their village that they have responsibility for can offer. Let me pray for uh, Chris, Helen, Anthony, or for Helen, Anthony, Dot, Betty, Mary, Diane, Marjorie, Jane, Gillian, Linda, Eric, Phyllis, uh, Edith, Jim and Jackie in Holton in Weniston. We could also the Margaret's Bloomfield Goals with Goldston, Anthony, Mary, Moira, Francis, Dorothy, Jane, Robert, Heather, Cyrilla, Colin, Jennifer, Felicity, uh, Vivian, Graham, Ruth, John, Sally, Dave, Diana, Joanna, Jean, Suzanne, Francis, Anna, Colin, <coughs> and uh, would you had names for the other next royals in other places? Pray blessing on them that they will grow, thrive, and prosper in your love and in their faith. Please draw others into those worshipping communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <coughs> Lord God, who gave to Lancelot Andrew's many gifts of your Holy Spirit, making him a man of prayer and a pastor of your people, perfect in us that which is lacking in your gifts of faith to increase it, of hope to establish it, of love to kindle it, that we may live in the light of your grace and glory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube.